Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you don't know me, my name is Desiree. We're going to get started for a nice 30 minute energizing flow. You can start at the top of your mat here. So let's do it. I'm just going to get started. Nice deep cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. We'll take about three of those. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Two more. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more in. One more out. Good, you guys. We'll take a peek down at our feet. Make sure our feet are about hip width distance apart. Palms are facing forward, creating a nice opening through the collarbone. We'll start with an ujjayi breath this morning. So taking inhales through the nose and out through the nose. We'll start about three rounds of that breath. Nice even inhales and nice even exhales. On the last one, we'll sweep the arms up over our head. On the exhale, we'll fold at the waist and take a nice forward fold. And we'll have a ragdoll here, so you're welcome to keep the feet a little bit wider, interlacing the arms either low behind the back or grabbing opposite hand to opposite elbow. And we're going to stay here for a few moments, just kind of waking up the back of the legs, maybe bending into the knees, maybe straightening one of them and bending into the other, mainly just letting the head hang heavy here, letting the chest rest on those thighs. Letting the shoulders drop down and away from the ears. Good. And the next inhale, we'll plant the hands to the earth. We'll walk the feet a little bit closer together. We'll take a nice inhale. We'll find some length. Maybe you get some blocks to meet the floor. Find a little bit more length in the spine here. And then on the exhale, we'll, we'll step it right back to high plank. And we're here for a moment or two, just really building some fire here in the core and through the whole body. So legs are nice and strong. Arms are straight as they can be, but not hyperextended. The bottom is down, the core is active. And there's a long spine from the top of the head all the way to the toes. Another inhale and then exhale through the nose if you can. And then we'll hover in a nice low push up for two and one. And then we're actually going to push ourselves back up into high plank. Send the hips nice and high. Take it to a downward facing dog. Walk out that dog when you get there. Again, bending into one knee, straightening the other feels nice sometimes. But letting the head hang heavy, the shoulders are away from the ears, arms are straight as they can be, hands are pressing into the earth, pushing out of that shoulder cage. Nice and tall on the toes, keeping the hips as high as they can be, active in that low belly. couple more moments here. Just allowing this down dog to arrive. It might be the first down dog of the week, so we'll take it easy. Maybe a nice bend in the knees here, protecting those hamstrings. And then we'll slowly start to walk the feet towards the hands. We'll find a nice inhale. We'll find some length. On the exhale, we'll fold back forward. Then we'll sweep the arms up over our head to complete that little mini sun salutation A. Draw the hands to the heart center. Take a moment. Take a breath. We'll allow the arms to come down by our sides here. And we'll sweep them back up over the head. Full throttle here. We'll take the hands through heart center. 
And we'll start with a full sun salutation. A. So hands plant, we find some length. Exhale, step it back, high plank. Chaturanga, low push up. And you can come into the full expression of upward facing dog here, or if you prefer, you take your modification, either Sphinx pose or low cobra. Either way, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. Good, nice even inhales, nice even exhales. And you take your time through each posture. This is your practice, so you take it as your body needs it. Again, head hangs nice and heavy here. Shoulders drop down and away from the ears. Pressing through all 10 fingers, all 10 toes. And bringing an awareness around the thumb and the index finger. Just making sure that there's no space in between those areas and that the palm is fully pressed into the earth. On the next inhale, we're gonna walk the right foot forward. Coming into low runner's lunge, drop that knee back down. And then we'll either keep the hands on the earth. Maybe you find some blocks underneath them or maybe you stack the hands on top of one another on that right knee as you come up. Inhales and exhales. And maybe you bend a little bit deeper into that front knee. Maybe you think about lifting that left foot off of the earth if it feels comfortable. Maybe before you do that, you find a nice cushion underneath that left knee. We're just gonna practice taking a nice, what is that, the left quadriceps stretch. So you can always reach for that. That feels good. If you have a wall behind you and you'd rather put this leg up a wall, I say go for it. It can feel nice. It is also pretty intense for a morning practice, but I say might as well get it out of the way, right? <laughs> On the exhale, we'll lower back down to the earth. Take a nice half split here. Maybe you walk the hands to an area that feels more comfortable. Maybe you get a little bit closer to the leg with the nose. Maybe you just skip this step altogether, right? Your practice, your choice. We'll bend back into the front knee. We're gonna untuck that toe and come off of the left knee. Then we're gonna sweep the arms up over our head coming into crescent lunge. This is a great posture, nice foundation for other postures. Nice deep bend in that front knee, nice strength in that back leg as well. On the toes of the left foot, the heel is up nice and high there. And then we're actually gonna take some lunges. So feel free if the stance feels a little bit too long, you would just but we're gonna hover that left knee off the earth for about three rounds of breath. So hover, lift. So inhale and exhale. Inhale, hover, exhale, lift. Once more, inhale, hover. Good, exhale, lift. Nicely done. And now we're just gonna play with some balance here. We're gonna just step the left foot to meet the right foot. Standing tall, sweep the arms up over your head. Bring the heart, hands through heart center. Take a moment, take a breath, see how that body feels after that right side. And now we're just gonna step it back into crescent lunge, but stepping back now with that right leg. So we're kind of going to take all that in reverse now on the opposite leg. So crescent lunge first. And we're going to head into those dips. So find your crescent lunge. Nice strong legs. Maybe bend a little bit deeper into that front left leg. And you know where we're going. Some lunges. So three lunges. One. 
Nice inhales and exhales. Two. One more, you guys. Three. Good. Bring the hands to heart center. Take a moment in the crescent lunge. Then we'll lower everything to the earth. Hands. Back right knee comes down. Untuck the back right toes. And we'll come into that half split. Again, coming onto the heel of that left foot. Toes are pointing up and back. A nice flexed foot here. Really just trying to get into that hamstring. Again, you can bend the knee always. I always recommend a knee bend. If we're not flexible in the hamstrings, there's no need to be flexible in the hamstrings in this very moment. So we'll start with a bent knee and work our way up. There's no rush in yoga. It's always a practice. So with that, we'll bend the front knee. And we'll take a moment in this low runner's lunge just to set up the foundation before either we stay like this with the hands down or we decide to come all the way up onto that left knee, stacking the hands on top of one another. Nice strong inhales and nice strong exhales, you guys. Again, trying to keep that ujjayi breath, the inhale through the nose and the exhale through the nose, especially in an energizing and really moving practice like this. It's good to get a control over that breathing. And again, if you took that hamstring, excuse me, the quadricep stretch on the other side, I encourage you to go for it on this side. If it's not there today, don't worry about it. But again, you get the padding under the knee if you need it. You maybe you fold the mat over, maybe you get a pillow. But that leg will bend upward, keeping it flexed and often intensify the stretch. So play with it a little bit here. Again, if you need a wall, just back it up against a wall and let the wall do this for you. Still equally pressing into that left foot here. We're not just sinking into that hip. That wouldn't feel good, right? We're, we're smart yogis. We think about the other areas of our body. So another breath or two here. Then we'll come through a nice vinyasa flow. So releasing everything, making sure we're not slingshotting that leg down. Nice thoughtful movements here. And we'll maybe just take this left foot into tabletop. We'll uncurl the toes and then we'll come into our high plank. Chaturanga, low push up. So bend at the elbows, hover off the earth. Good. Untuck the toes, bring it to upward facing dog or your cobra or the sphinx pose. Untuck the toes once more. Send the hips nice and high to downward facing dog. And you'll take about five breaths here in this downward facing dog. Noticing the hips, noticing those legs, seeing how they feel after moving through that little sequence. Letting the head hang heavy here. Allowing the gaze to fall between the feet. Pressing down with those fingers, especially the thumb and the index finger, keeping that connection with the full palm. Good, as that fifth inhale and exhale comes in and out, we're then gonna walk our hands back to our feet. And we're gonna take our hands under our feet, pasta, para gustasana. So the padas go under the hastas, or rather the hastas go under the padas. The padas are the feet, <laughs> the hastas are the hands. So you're just gonna flip the palms so that the palms are facing forward. And you're just going to slide them underneath your feet. So it's just nice to kind of reverse 
the way that the hands are always going. And it's almost like a little wrist massage, the toes, if you wanna move those around there, it can feel good. But trying to let the head hang heavy. So we'll take a nice inhale. We'll find some length in the spine and on the exhale, you can bend at the elbows and kind of create this little bit of tension here to fold forward. And we'll take about three to five breaths here, allowing again the posture to just arrive in your body. And letting it arrive without any expectations, no judgments, just showing up authentically as you are. And eventually we will either stay there a little bit longer or we'll move on. So we'll take the hostas out from underneath the pattis. We'll roll them out a little bit. And then we'll walk ourselves back out into high plank. And from high plank, we will take some side planks. So side planks, I have a couple variations. Either you, excuse me, jump into the full expression of the posture. So we'll take it on the left hand first. You'll come onto the left outer edge of your foot. You'll stack the right foot on top of the left. And then you will shift your weight all the way onto the left hand and reach up with that right hand. I'm going to just show you the other modification. If you're going the full expression, go the full expression and stay there for a few breaths. If you're not, you're gonna just drop that left knee down, maybe pivot that knee so that the heel is the legs like a kickstand behind you. And then you open up the posture. So you're still on that left hand. You're still reaching with the right hand, but the right foot is anchored down into the earth as well as the left. And if you want, to take that verification a little bit different, you'll inhale that right leg up. And you can do this in the full expression of the posture too, if you're feeling yourself and you wanna take that right ankle off of the left ankle. By all means, soar today, my friends. But pressing down and away with that left hand, get out of that left shoulder. One more breath. Beautifully done, you guys. Take it down. And we'll come back through high plank here. And then we'll take it on the other side. So either full expression or drop that right knee down. Pivot the heel. Make it a kickstand. Open up the posture, keeping that left foot down or either taking it up. Again, whatever your body is calling for today. As long as you are pressing down into that right hand to release that tension in the right shoulder, so we're not just sinking in. Some strong movements here today. If you lift that left leg, keep that foot flexed, keep it as straight as you can. Reaching in all those directions with all those limbs for another moment or two. And most importantly, finding some length from the top of the head all the way to those toes. Awesome, next inhale or exhale, you'll begin to lower back into your high push-up, that plank pose. We'll take a moment or two here and we'll take our hips down. We'll keep the toes as they are and we'll take an upward facing dog with the toes out. I just wanna have you guys journey there today. See how it feels on the body, see how it feels on the legs, see how it feels on the lower back. If there's tension there, you guys, send the hips back up, find that low belly engagement, find some length as you shift everything forward and backward, right? Two opposing directions. We're lifting with the crown of our head, we're shining that chest open, and we're extending nice and long through those legs. Inhale and exhale. Send it back, downward facing dog. 
Walk that dog out. Maybe you find some stillness. Just find about five breaths here. Nicely done, you guys. We'll start to walk the feet towards the front of our mats. We'll find an inhale as we lengthen. And on the exhale, we'll fold over the legs once more. Sweep the arms up over our heads. Bring the hands through heart center. And we'll come into our chair pose. So sinking the hips down and back as if there is a chair behind you. Knees are nice and bent. And just take a peek over those toes. If you can't see them, send the hips down and back and shine those shins forward. Maybe you'll find a little bit more depth in the posture with every inhale and every exhale. Make sure that gaze is nice and forward, maybe even up towards the fingertips. On the exhale, fold over your legs. Let's get out of that chair pose. Nice inhales and nice exhales and that forward fold. Then we'll step it back to high plank. Chaturanga, low push-up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Good inhales and good exhales. And then we'll step the right foot forward and between the hands. Again, if it doesn't go there the first time, it's okay. Just find your way. Find your way there. We're not going to let the, the knees sink down right away. We'll get there later. So we're keeping that knee up. Nice low runner's lunge here. We'll pivot that back heel down, adjust the stance if we need to, and then we're drawing into warrior one. So strong foundation in the legs, sweep the arms up over your head, warrior one. Good, you guys, a nice bend in the knee in that front leg, a nice strong and straight leg in that left back leg. The toes of that left foot are kind of on like a 45 degree angle. But it, mainly I just want it to feel comfortable. I don't want it to feel like an awkwardness in that back front, excuse me, that back left foot. Good inhales and good exhales. And then we're gonna just open it up all the way to warrior two so that that left foot is now gonna pivot so that the left outer edge is parallel with the back of your mat or the back of the room or wall that's behind you. So that front knee is nice and straight forward. The knee is not turning in towards the mat or too far out towards the mat. So you play with the posture, you play with the movements, a nice bend in that front right knee, long straight leg of the left leg. Arms can be by your heart center. They can be reaching out towards either side. Good inhales and good exhales here, you guys. Eventually, we'll straighten the front leg, pivot the toes towards the same direction. So mine's towards the back of my room. So both toes are fainting towards the back of the room. We'll come through a nice straddle stretch here. Find the hands on the hips, nice inhale. Exhale, fold over your legs. I'm just gonna face you, so I'm not giving you a bum shot. So, facing forward, folding over the legs and the hands can eventually come off of the hips and onto the earth. And the head can hang heavy here. Maybe you wanna walk the hands in between the legs. Maybe you want to grab 
um, the ankles with the hands. So right hand to right ankle, left hand to left ankle. I encourage you to just play around with this posture. Maybe you bend into one knee straight and the other. You can feel good in the hamstrings and in the groin area. Eventually we will bring the hands back towards the hips. We will find some length. We'll come halfway up and eventually all the way back up. Good, and then we're just gonna pivot the left foot forward now. I'm kind of keeping that, that right foot parallel with the back of the mat. So the right outer edge is still straight with the back of the mat. Now we're just gonna take warrior two on the left leg. Kind of just switching sides here. Taking nice, good inhales, nice long exhales. So bending into that front left leg and the nice straight back right leg. Just taking a peek down at that left knee. If it's turning inward towards the mat, try to just take it back in line with that left hip. And the knee should be relatively over the left ankle. Again, your practice, your body is different. You meet it where it is at today. One more inhale, nice exhale. And this is gonna be kind of an awkward transition. We're gonna come through warrior one. So maybe just shorten the stance a little bit. So walk that back heel in and up and then pivot so that that right foot those toes are kind of pointing towards a 45 degree angle. Again, pivot so that it feels comfortable. We'll straighten out through the back leg. We'll find some length there. We'll bend into that front leg for warrior one. So warrior two, the body is facing all one space. Same thing with warrior one, everything's shining forward. Couple more inhales and a couple more exhales. Nice strong legs, nice strong arms as they reach up and over our head. With every inhale, we find some length. With every exhale, we find some strength. Eventually, we'll pivot all the way onto the toes of that right foot. We'll come down and through that low runner's lunge, ending that little series. So, Plant the hands, step the left foot to meet the right foot. We'll take it through a nice little vinyasa flow. Chaturanga to low push up, to upward facing dog. Sending the hips high and back to downward facing dog. Nicely done, a breath or two here. Maybe more, again, your practice, your breath. You follow where it needs to go. We'll all begin to think about walking the feet towards the hands, finishing up this series. Inhaling for some length. Exhale, fold over the leg for a forward fold. Then we'll sink the hips back. So maybe the toes touch. Heels can stay separated, but the legs are together as you sink the heel, the, sorry, you sink the, the sit bones, the hips down and back for chair pose. And we're here for three. Nice long spine, nice active belly here for two. And one, stand tall, stretch, reach the arms up over your head. Inhale. Exhale. Hands to your heart center here. Beautifully done, you guys. We'll take the arms up over our head once more. We'll find a chair pose, but this time we'll just find the earth underneath us. So we're gonna sit all the way onto our bottoms. Maybe you use the hands to get there. We'll extend the legs nice and long. 
We'll reach the arms up over our head, just like a forward fold as we do when we stand, but this time we've got the earth supporting us. So reach the arms, get nice and tall, all the way from the sits bones to the crown of your head. Legs are long out in front of us, feet are active, they're flexed, and we're just gonna fold at the waist over the legs. So we're gonna try to keep the length that we've just created all the way over our legs. Eventually the rounding of the spine will happen naturally, but the before is keeping that length. So keep the length, keep reaching with the crown of the head, with the hands, with the fingertips, and then fold over your legs. And don't worry about reaching that forehead to the shins or reaching your hands to touch the toes. All of that will come in time. And there's no rush in this yoga practice, you know? You meet yourself where you're at every day, just as you are. And maybe that means you grab some blocks underneath your hands to get the crown to meet you, or maybe that means putting a pillow on top of the shins here and resting your head on it. Maybe it's folding that pillow in half because you're not there yet. So you find the posture that you need for your body in this moment. And you take nice inhales and nice cleansing exhales to allow that to happen. And then we'll slowly begin to Find our way out of the posture. Again, by way of lengthening first and then reaching up and back. Got our hands will come through heart center and then eventually we'll lower all the way onto our backs. So lowering all the way onto the back. We'll take some Hip stretching, nice figure four. So we'll bend the left knee first, plant it into the ground. And then we'll take that right leg up. We'll flex the right foot. We'll turn that, um, we'll pivot the knee. So it's pointing out to the side. And we're just gonna cross the right ankle over the left thigh here. And this might be just all you need today. If you need it to go deeper, you're gonna come onto the toes of the left foot. Maybe you need deeper. Then you'll lift that left foot up off the earth. You'll reach the right hand through that little window that your legs made and you'll meet it with the left hand underneath the left leg. And you'll play with pulling in those legs back and forth, just finding that sweet spot. Good inhales and good exhales here. Again, trying to keep that ujjayi breath. And then eventually we'll take this into a twist. So we'll release the arms out to the sides. The legs will stay the same. And we're just gonna drop the legs over to the left side of the room. The right sole of the foot will meet the earth and you'll feel a nice stretch here, a nice spinal twist, but also I feel for myself at least, it just gets all into that right outer hip area. It's like almost like another hip, hip opening, but also a twist. So the gaze will come over the right arm, the right shoulder, or maybe you decide to close the eyes. As long as you're breathing, you're doing it right. Once you've had your fill of this posture, we'll just slide that right leg down to meet the left. And then we'll bring it back through center, taking it on the left side this time. So Flexing the left foot, cross that ankle over the right leg. And you're on your own from here. If you need to go deeper, you go deeper. If this is enough 
Then you stay right where you are. If you go deeper, you're gonna, you're gonna lift that right leg up maybe and interlace the fingers underneath that right leg. But just keeping in mind that flexed foot is saving that knee joint right now. So let's keep that foot active. It's helpful even to just flex both feet. I feel like that reminds me even more. And again, you play with this posture, you find that sweet spot and you stay there with some nice fulfilling breaths. And practicing keeping those, that low back on the earth, the shoulders as, as planted on the earth as possible here, just to keep driving home that idea of length. And eventually you will find your way into the twist. So release the arms, keep the legs if you can, and then drop everything over to the right side. So the sole of the left foot will meet the earth. You know, tilt the head towards the left shoulder, maybe close the eyes, maybe just fix your gaze on something. Eventually, unwinding from this posture, coming back through center, tucking the knees into the chest and just giving them a nice quick squeeze. And then on an exhale, we'll release everything onto the earth, stretching the limbs out long. The arms will come down by our sides, palms will flip upward so they're facing the ceiling. Eyes will begin to close. And we'll practice our last posture, the corpse pose or Shavasana. And this posture, as simple as it is, can be quite difficult to slow the mind down. So with that, we'll focus our awareness on the breath, taking about 10 inhales and 10 exhales. Allowing the body to find some stillness. And as you bring the awareness into the breath, it is natural for the mind to wander. So don't try to stop it from wandering. Allow it to have other thoughts, to think about work, to think about life. The idea is to acknowledge the thoughts as they arise without judgment, without expectation, and to let the thoughts go. Shavasana. slowly begin to bring some gentle movements back into the body. Maybe start wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. Maybe you stay in Shavasana for the remainder of this class. Eventually, we'll all begin to find our way onto the right side of our bodies for fetal position. That coming into a rebirth after our corpse pose. Slowly and gently, maybe even keeping the eyes closed, we'll begin to find our way 
in a comfortable seated posture, bringing the hands to our heart center, sitting up nice and tall here. We'll bring about some gratitude for ourselves, for showing up today and taking care of our body and our mind. We'll bring the thumb knuckles to the third eye center as we bow to each other and say namaste. Well done. Thank you. Namaste. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Namaste. Thank you guys for pairing with me through those technical difficulties. Um, as always, my name is Desiree. If you have any questions, any comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, so it's a great little quick class. Get the body moving on a Monday. So thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the class, feel free to send a love offering. They are always graciously welcomed. Um, yeah, again, I'm Desiree. And uh, have a great Monday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Goodbye.